you bring up your charts in oil and develop an awesome trading idea that oil should bounce. You think it's just sold off too much and there's a, a large trade to the upside that's coming. But how do you take this idea and turn it into a professional trade? Many large traders who I coach have been anticipating this trade the past few trading sessions only to take losses. With all this interest in oil bouncing, I asked Merritt Black, who runs SMB Futures, to help us identify how to play for a bounce in oil like a professional trader. Sit back, take out your notebook and pen, and learn how to play for a bounce in oil like a professional trader. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafuri, co-founder of SME Capital and the author of the trading classic One Good Trade and the Playbook. If you find value in this special video from SMB Futures on the next big trade opportunity in oil and like to learn more about our tools and our chat room, please visit smbu.com futures. You can see the link right here. And please, after this video, visit the comments section to let us know how this video helped your trading and what other videos we can produce of value to the trading community. Trade well. All right, so uh, my name's Merritt. For those of you that don't know me, I uh, head up our futures arm here at SMB. It's an entirely remote desk at the moment. Uh, so that's why you see me locked in my cave all day talking to people on a microphone. Um, as you know, many of you know that crude oil has been in play lately. Um, I don't keep up with fundamentals, so I have no idea why it's been in play, but it's been moving a lot, so that's been pretty cool. Um, it, it, I, I would like to say this, it hasn't been moving insanely, okay? If we take a look at, let's say, um, this chart here, which is just daily bars, here you can see the, um, the average uh, daily range. This, the thick line here is a 20-day rolling average of simply the range from the high to low. It's not an ATR because I don't like to include gaps in my, in my volatility read because that's not tradable volatility for me because uh, I don't hold overnight. So uh, as you can see, I mean, even back early this year, we were, we were at 160, 170. That's 100 and, you know, 168 ticks. Crude oil has one tick per cent. That's uh, how it moves as opposed to like S&P futures, which move in 25 cent increments. Uh, so anyways, you could say it has an ATR of like 1.7 back in the day. Um, you know, today's range, obviously two and a half points. So it's, it's moving a bit more, but the current 20 day average is, is still under two, 1.98. So nothing tr too crazy, crazy. Um, and historically speaking, we've seen even crazier moves than, than what we're looking at here. Um, I wanted to talk about the overall breakdown in crude. So let's start with like a weekly bar chart, okay? Uh, I think crude is in, to use a Muhammad El Arain term, if any of you guys follow him, he's one of the, I think, the sharpest economists, overall fundamental minds out there in terms of markets. Um, he headed up PIMCO for a long time, or, you know, was just uh, and split off and whatnot from those, those boys, but uh, really, really sharp guy. Um, he talks about, he likes to use this term kind of a new normal, and I think right now in crude, we're in something of a new normal. So, I mean, um, crude, if, I mean, if we go way, way back and really look at what it's done, I don't have a tremendous amount of data loaded here, but now that's in play. <laughs> um, you guys remember we spiked way up, and then all of a sudden, does anyone remember what happened fundamentally in the oil market here? This is like March of 14. Does anybody remember what caused the downward movement in crude? This is OPEC was a player. Do you remember what? <laughs> um, so OPEC decided that they're getting some real competition from the uh, shale producers, those guys in Canada and, and whatnot, that they're able to extract crude cheaper than they were. And since they were such a powerful player in the pricing, supply demand, that they could control the market such as they do, they decided that they would like to 
not take profits for a while in order to gain market share. You guys talk about market share as being like a huge variable in your trading a lot of times. This is what they decided to do. They decided to depress prices by increasing supply so much that they would actually squeeze the margins of the other participants around the world so hard they would go bankrupt. I mean, you heard about the, a lot of the oil companies in Texas and Canada over the past, you know, so many years going out of business and things like that, cutting jobs, all that stuff. So they were successful in that. They grew their market share by a temporary uh, re reduction in their profits. So it was a pretty smart move. But anyways, so ever since that happened, we're in kind of a new normal in crude. And I think the technicals show us that. You can see the thickest lines I have, on, again, on this weekly bar chart here, start from where we saw these initial resistance highs from these two swings back in early 15, down to this, these lows down here. That's the range that we've now defined ourselves to be in in crude uh, for quite some time. So this sell-off, everything that began leading us to today with an above average range to the downside, that's all due to this little wick right here saying, you know what, nothing tremendous is going to change about the crude oil pricing for the world right now. So to me, it was a very technical play. It was something we had our eyes on. It's something we were watching. It was an absolute critical inflection because when the way that I think about markets and train my guys to think about markets is it's all about balance. Okay. It's all about where are consolidation areas and then where are we accepting outside of or back into those defined balance areas. So this is our longest time frame view that we really care about with crude. As you can see, clear rejection from those highs. So once this week is done here, maybe even during this massive wick being put in the week before, it's a pretty good heads up that, you know, even if you were to draw like a channel, you know, and take a look at this, it wasn't able to extend up to where the channel would have been. It got totally slapped in the face here. And that's just led through. Furthermore, we have a nice little intermediate level here in between our two main levels. And that broke down two weeks ago. And that's led us to what we always talk about, my guys, likely destinations. If this, then what, right? It's like you're creating even short term scenarios for each day that you look at, you know, let's say a second day play and the key levels from the prior day. In this case, once we break this level down, our expectation is to go test a more intermediate balance, which is this big guy that we were in for quite some time. So the upper end of this old balance is where we expect us to go, go test. And you know, we're, we're getting close to doing that uh, as we speak. So that's kind of a longer term view. Uh, one of the things I keep up with is, a, is different VWAP periodicities than probably what you guys are used to seeing. This is a daily bar chart. And this is VWAP for the year, calculated on a raw, unfiltered, tick by tick volume data for the entire year. So it's very precise. Um, it's, it's something we, we lean on pretty heavily. So here's that, here's that area, okay? The, the shaded area is a plus and minus one standard deviation from VWAP. Uh, then the dotted line above and below is the plus and minus one and a half standard deviation, and this is the two, okay? So any time, other than areas where we get caught in kind of a fast grind, anytime we see movement that kind of sticks beyond the, the plus or minus two in areas, that's typically a, a, markets require energy to move with momentum for sustained periods of time. They require a tremendous amount of energy to fuel that machine. And it's tremendously difficult uh, to maintain that type of momentum beyond two standard deviations away from, from where you're trading, regardless of what time frame you're looking at. This just happens to be a yearly. So we were noticing the, uh, the extension here um, coupled with the key technical level on the weekly. And then all of a sudden you see it start to sell. We can expect this to come back to this inflection point. And one thing we've noticed, take a look at this. VWAP provided support. VWAP provided support, support, support. So this was a key inflection here once we broke that down recently. And what did we do? We balanced for a handful of days. A lot of times, some of the most important information is what doesn't happen in a market. Any idiot can look at a chart and tell you what happened, but it takes a, a deeper insight to look at a chart and say, hmm, this would have been very likely, but it's unable to do it. It's really, really struggling. It's unable to get that done. 
And we felt that way about this lack of a bounce from VWAP here. And so once it started to crash back into it, um, you know, as I, as I would have expected right here actually, um, the expectation would have been to actually move all the way down to the lower standard deviation. Um, so that, that's what we got here. Um, multiple, multiple weeks before we ever tagged 6130. We were up here and we were talking about 6130 being a level and people thought we were nuts. You know, like, where, where are you pulling that level from? So anyways, today, low of day, where we've now seen a decent bounce come in from, what is that? Well, that's that second standard deviation for the year right there. So uh, that's an important reference. So beyond this overall framework and taking a look at, at what's going on in crude, um, I use a, a tool called Market Profile. Probably looks like gibberish to you guys. Uh, each one of these blobs, as you can tell by the, the x-axis down here, represent one day. And all this is, let's take a look at the November 8th, for example. I can split it out into its individual periods, which just happen to be 30 minutes apiece. So all this really is, all of these A's is from the pit session open for the first 30 minutes. All of the B's are the second 30 minutes. It's a 30 minute chart of the pit session for the day. That's all this is. But the cool thing about it is instead of looking at it like more like a bar chart like this, its native form is to actually look at things in terms of a distribution of where price is spending the most time at each price level. So too long of a talk to really get into exactly how we use that. But again, like I started with just a price action chart, it's all about balance. We look at where the consolidation, is, consolidation areas are forming, which is where these fat distributions are forming, okay? So on a day-to-day -day basis, for example, this day, we would have been looking at, actually, these two days combined because they were balancing on top of each other. So we would have been looking at these two days combined. And so we would have been looking at how November 8th responds to the main balance area. And what we see is that the actual most traded price, I, just, I didn't pick this example as a cherry pick thing, it just happens to be this, this way. The very most traded price, what we call the point of control over the past two days, is exactly where we opened and did an open test and drive. You have an open drive lower, now it becomes all about is the breakout from this distribution going to be maintained or not? And as we see in following 30 minute periods, we get the retest and continued rejection. So we would be short biased that entire day. So within the landscape of a rejection from a key area and one critical inflection that we had along the way, we're running to the second one now today, we look at our TPO chart and take a look at day to day how we're trading relative to prior areas of established balance. And those gives us key lines in the sand those define our shorter term risk reward landscape. This is our market worldview that we call it. Um, so inside of that, then it's quite simple. Then you drop down to your, your lower time frames. I don't use any time-based lower time frames. They're all volume-based charts, like a tick chart that you guys may have, have pulled up before. Um, so you know, today, for example, we have our levels we're looking at, um, and we're simply trying to time rotations to get us in line with our overall bias created by the market profile and every, all the context, everything that's going on. So we always say context is king. Um, and just to bring it all down into today, um, you know, you guys, when something's really in play, this gray shaded region here is the overnight session where it starts to lighten up right here is the 9 a.m. pit session open for crude, just FYI, give you a perspective. Um, so this was 2.30 yesterday when that market closes. So overnight, notice we had this rejection here from the overnight high and here. Key kind of area here around this 59.30 that's getting rejected. More times than not, at least in futures, at least the way we approach things and, and monitor things, we can look at our other references and contextual charts to figure out why that overnight high is there. It's not actually the overnight high is significant. It's actually that there's another reference that made the overnight high stop there that's significant. So in this case, coming into today, why was the overnight high there? What's preventing this movement? Well, it's quite simple. If we look at a chart of uh, a weekly VWAP, another periodicity I keep up with, 
there are those two retests right there and there. This level here is last week's low. So yesterday after the close, we saw a tremendous amount of volatility pick up. I mean, they were just whacking bids left and right. And if you look at the tape, which we were reading in real time, right here, as soon as it breached last week's low, it was as much selling as could possibly be per unit of time. On a 1,000 volume bar chart, there was essentially zero offers lifted during that period. It was instantaneous, a thousand contracts just blowing out. That stops getting run below buyers that defended last week's low and created last week's low. Coming into the overnight session, once you see that and you see that inflection on the tape in real time, that's going to be a major reference for us. So now we see overnight unable to get back into last week's range. It's no surprise that to, to, to see what we see coming into today. So that's it. Just really wanted to walk you guys through kind of a top-down approach, maybe a unique perspective of seeing markets a little differently than, than you may have heard before. So any questions right, or anything? A lot of guys that I work with inside and outside the firm that are looking for an opportunity on the long side. What are some of the different scenarios that you could see are points that would get you interested in, in that Happening. Yeah, that's a great, great question. So I would take us back to this yearly VWAP chart and I would point out that we have pushed into a real extreme low here. It really is. It's a second standard deviation away from the VWAP for the year. So that in and of itself is kind of, it's not something where you want to catch a falling knife in my opinion, but it is something where you're alerted to the potential for overextension. And now what do we want to do? We want to we don't want to guess, right? We, we, you guys know trading is not about predicting. It's about reacting to what is. So we're alerted that statistically speaking, we're due for somewhat of a bounce. I would then go towards taking a look at how these profiles are developing day to day, Bella, and I would look at something to where you form a cluster of days that provide some balance. At least the downtrend begins to, to pause. It's almost like, uh, I think, uh, think of this like the opposite of shorting a, a low float. It's easier to play the backside, right? That's what I'm recommending ultimately here. And using market profile to see where balance starts to form. And then, maybe it's day two, maybe it's day three, you see that hold above a balance area. We know we're in an overextended environment on the higher time frames. Now we're using real market generated information to show us that we're able to break and hold above an area that was a consolidation, that's, that's how I'd play it for sure.